Welcome to The Now, I'm Ashley. The Nintendo Switch is a whole year old, guys, but are we already getting a new upgraded console in the near future? After some people dug into the Switch's recent 5.0 firmware update, they found some interesting evidence there might be new hardware in the making, but Cool your debts just a little bit. Uh, hackers on the Switch Brew site found some references to a new Tegra 214 chip, which would be an upgrade, just a small one, but a little bit of an upgrade over the Switch's current Tegra 210 chip. This could have more to do with security, potentially, because of the recent vulnerabilities that some blame on the Tegra 210. But in addition to the new chip, researcher Mike Heskin found that the upgrade could also include an updated printed circuit board, eight gigabytes of RAM, which would double the current four gigabytes. Needless to say, this is all speculation at this point, rumor for now. We'll see if Nintendo announces anything. I think some of those upgrades would be welcome, but it is also pretty soon for them to be iterating. So we'll see. CD Projekt Red is moving on up. The developer just announced that they'll be opening a brand new studio arm in Rostov, Poland. Uh, the studio's core is made up of the development team formerly known as Strange New Things, which was just acquired by CD Projekt Red as part of their expansion. So, you know, opening a studio, renaming a studio, whatever. Uh, according to the announcement, the team at Rostov will join up with the teams in Warsaw and Krakow to bolster the development of Cyberpunk 2077. Considering CD Projekt Red's made previous comments about the size and scope of Cyberpunk 2077 being bigger than anything they've done before, and you guys, they've done some pretty ambitious scale games. Yeah, opening a new studio pretty much proof that they need that much help. Far Cry 5's release date is just around the corner. Oh my god. And if you're wondering how long you'll be shooting up cultists in rural Montana, it seems like you finally got your answer. Speaking with GameSpot, executive producer Dan Hayes said, I would say that a good player will go through it in 25 hours. However, he went on to add that players will likely get sidetracked by all the extra things there are to do in the world, like hunting and fishing. In fact, during playtesting, he said players were often easily distracted, which will definitely extend the playtime. You can see how much you'll be distracted when Far Cry 5 releases next week which is March 27th, it kind of snuck up. I don't know, maybe it didn't sneak up on you, it snuck up on me. Nintendo had its Nindies Showcase live stream today, and the big news is Banner Saga 3 will be coming to the Switch this summer. If you haven't played the very well-regarded Tactics series, don't worry, the first two games will also be coming to the Switch soon, so you can get all caught up. Of course, Nintendo announced a bunch of other games too, including the fighting game Fantasy Strike coming this summer, and the side-scroller Mark of the Ninja Remastered that's coming this fall. Meanwhile, the puzzle game Luminous Remastered, which is such a great game and will give you the claw, uh, is coming this spring, and so is the indie RPG West of Loathing. That's coming as a Switch exclusive this spring. The roguelike RTS game Bad North also coming to Switch this summer. One notable absence, though, was the very well-regarded Metroidvania Hollow Knight. Its studio, Team Cherry Games, said the game wouldn't be part of today's presentation, but they did say they'll give us an update on the Switch port's progress, along with a possible release date later this week. So keep stay tuned for that. Uh, one other game that didn't make the showcase but was announced later was none other than Hyper Light Drifter, Great game if you haven't played it yet. The game's release for Switch was announced later on Twitter today by developer Heart Machine, and that one's gonna be coming this year. We played that for a Game Club, actually. A lot of fun. Great, great game. Super happy to see it coming to Switch. Uh, speaking of indies, Universal is teaming up with game engine Unity and putting a ton of its enormous IPs on the line this week, giving some indie developers a shot to grab some huge licenses with unique game pitches. This is happening via the Universal Game Dev Challenge at GDC, which is happening this week, and that'll see indie devs competing to grab the rights to make games for franchises like, oh, I don't know, a couple you may have heard of, Back to the Future, Jaws, Battlestar Galactica, Voltron, Legendary Defender, Turok. <sighs> Chris Heatherly, Universal's Executive Vice President of Games and Digital Platforms, said that doing it this way helps them find ideas that might have slipped past their radar before, saying, it takes a lot of the friction out of the process for everyone, so we don't have to do a bunch of contracts and negotiations up front and can just focus on whether there is a compelling idea. The proof with the games is in the pudding, so this skips the talking stage and gets us right into the show it stage, where good developers shine the best. Hey, look, you never know. Maybe the genital jousting guy's gonna get back to the future or something. That could happen, and I would be weirdly interested in seeing what they do. Hey guys, 
Good news, weird news, Ubisoft is saved, sort of. Uh, after years of the threat of hostile takeover nipping at Ubisoft's heels, it looks like they finally reached an agreement with Vivendi, one that's gonna see the French conglomerate exiting its ambitions to acquire Ubisoft completely. Ubisoft announced today they've reached an agreement with Vivendi that will return its shares back to Ubisoft and other investors. Interestingly, one of those investors will now be Chinese mega publisher Tencent, which will begin work on bringing some of Ubisoft's franchises to China. This deal puts Vivendi off the course of making a hostile takeover bid for Ubisoft for good, pretty much, and means that Ubisoft gets to keep doing business the way that it wants to. CEO Yvgimo celebrated the buyback, saying, Today, Ubisoft is fully reaping the benefits of our long-term strategy and the successful transformation towards a more recurring and profitable business. Ubisoft is perfectly positioned to capture the numerous video game growth drivers in the coming years. We are focused more than ever on delivering on our strategic plan. Without much fanfare, a mobile port of PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds has arrived in the US. The iOS and Android app is already being played in Asia and released in Canada a week ago, but showed up somewhat unexpectedly in the States. After all, a launch date hadn't even been announced. I don't know, maybe they were feeling antsy after the success of Fortnite's mobile app, or maybe it was one of those things where they were waiting for the approval and it came in last second? Not really sure. Anyway, the mobile PUBG was developed by the Chinese corporation Tencent, who might sound familiar and are very close with Ubisoft now, um, but Tencent also owns games like League of Legends. Graphics-wise, it is a downscaled version of PUBG and obviously the controls have been adjusted too, but hey, if you want your fix on the go, your prayers have been answered. Hope you got plenty of battery life though, it's gonna drain it. So plan on carrying one of those mobile battery packs too. Speaking of Battle Royale games, the Fortnite streamer Ninja apparently makes so much money doing his thing. Ninja, AKA Tyler Blevins, said on a recent interview with CNBC, he makes $500,000 a month in revenue from his streams and partnerships. And if my math is correct, that works out to like $6 million a year. So he can probably afford rent. Ninja says a lot of the money comes from Twitch and Amazon Prime subscribers, and he credits his success to his high level of skill plus being an entertaining personality. But he also encouraged kids looking to copy him to stay in school, saying that it's really tough these days to make a living playing games. He told CNBC, you can't just drop everything and focus everything on playing video games for a living. Although, I remember back in the day, when I was playing games all the time and my mom was like, you're never gonna make a living playing video games. Like, how does this make you money? And then I started competing and then I joined a pro team and then I made enough money and then she didn't say that anymore. So it can definitely happen, but it's true. It is harder. The noise floor is getting higher and higher and higher and it's so difficult to break through these days. Anyway, moving along. Simon Pegg shed some light on that uh, weird Quentin Tarantino Star Trek news recently on a red carpet interview with UK fan site Hey You Guys, or Hey You Guys, most notably that he's not all that sure it's going to be R-rated. Pegg admitted he doesn't know much about it, but did say that Tarantino told him his concept a while ago and that J.J. Abrams liked it enough to throw it to a writer's room. It's been reported that Tarantino said he'd direct the next Star Trek film if Paramount would allow him to make it R-rated, and the studio gave an immediate yes. So we'll see what happens in the coming year. Pretty clear, no matter what they're moving forward with Tarantino's idea, we just don't know if it's actually gonna be R-rated or what it's gonna look like. It's gonna be unique, I'm pretty sure of that. So, Adult Swim apparently hasn't ordered season four of Rick and Morty yet. Co-creator Dan Harmon let this news out when a perturbed fan gave him a little bit of shit on Twitter about how he keeps getting distracted with shorts and video games instead of writing the next season of the popular show. Harmon responded with, it can be challenging, especially with crippling lazy alcoholism, to write a show that hasn't been ordered by a network. So what gives? Popular show, right? I mean, Rick and Morty is taking the world by a storm. The, man, the demand is so, off the charts, people waited for hours to buy stuff from a traveling Rickmobile and joke about a 20 year old limited edition McNugget dipping sauce that led to McDonald's reissuing 20 million packets of Szechuan sauce across the country. So yes, bit of a phenomenon. Season three of Rick and Morty was also, also the most watched comedy show in Adult Swim's history. The creators seem to be champing at the bit to dive into season four, and you'd think Adult Swim would want more of the most popular thing on their network, so hopefully they'll figure out whatever is holding things up. As it is, one of the producers said that due to animation timelines, even if they began work today, the earliest we'd see any new Rick and Morty is late 2019, so, huh. Figure 
it out, Adult Swim, quickly, if you please. It's been a rough week for Facebook after news reports that the company shared the data of 50 million users with a political data analysis company. The social network stock has taken a huge plunge. It's dropped by more than 8%, including more than 7% yesterday, which is the most that it's fallen in a single day in more than five years. The controversy broke out over the weekend after Facebook disclosed that 50 million of its user profiles had been harvested by Cambridge Analytica, which is a voter profiling company that's partly owned by billionaire Robert Mercer and it played a role in President Trump's 2016 presidential campaign. The revelation sparked an outcry from people who didn't know their information had been used in a political campaign. And this follows on the heels of Facebook admitting that it mm, kind of played a role in spreading fake news stories in 2016's presidential campaign. Meanwhile, the backlash continued on Tuesday. Well, today, after the company's chief information security officer announced he's leaving. So. Yes, this continues to be a very big problem for Facebook, and the movement to delete Facebook is gaining a lot of steam. And that's the news for this roundup. Let us know what you think of all these news updates in the comments down below to make sure you get news from every corner of the internet every weekday, like this video. And if you are new to this channel, subscribe to The Know, and then that way it will come to you. The developer just announced they're opening a brand new studio arm in, how do you say that? Rokla. Because <laughs> I remember that C is not a C either, right? It's got a line through it. This is a Warsaw.